Okay, and then yarn run serve again. And we'll come back. And then get all books. We'll invoke Axios and push the result into a variable called result here. So we're going to say await axios dot get and then we need to pass our API URL here which is going to be most easily done through uh, string interpolation. So we're going to say this API URL which we'll define in a moment and then books. Okay so this is going to get all books we don't have an API URL defined yet, so let's define that here. And let's grab that using this process.env.viewapp API URL. So what's going on here? Well, with the view CLI service, another neat thing that we have is uh, via Webpack, we have the ability to grab environment variables off of this process.env object and it's going to have access to anything prefixed with view underscore app underscore. And so we can actually set up an env file, which um, take note should be done in the root of the front end project, not in the source directory. So we're gonna create a file here called .env. And then we're going to specify that the view app API URL environment variable is localhost 5000 slash API. So if that looks good, we head back into our book service. We're now using that. Um, so we're getting a result. And now what we want to return is the result data. So it's saying Axios is a, type, a typo, which it is it's not in this case. Um, and so, all right, we have this book service we can export and it has a single method, it's just doing something very simple. It's using Axios to query this API URL slash books route. Keep in mind that you wanna make sure that your URL in this case is up to slash API, and I'm not using a, a forward slash in this case, so that when we're in the book service here, um, I suffix this API URL with a forward slash slash books, and then I am also ending it with a forward slash here. Okay, so how do we make use of this? Well, this can be used really any way you like. Um, oftentimes in more complex applications, we might delegate all of the requests to an external API here from our application store um, using Vuex. Again, something that I'll go into greater detail in the in-depth version of this course. Uh, but for now, we can just use our books.view uh, view here to actually um, work out that query and use the data to um, create some meaningful response for our user. So first of all, we have a very simple template, but let's fill out the other parts of a typical view component. So the next part would be the script. And as I mentioned earlier, it's important that we specify the language as TypeScript here. And then at the bottom, we'll have this style and we'll use SCSS as the style. Then here we'll make a similar import as we saw in our hello world component. We're gonna import component prop and view from view property decorator. In fact, we won't necessarily need a prop on this particular component, but now we can use this component decorator. And I like to add some metadata here, uh, namely the name of the component we can put here which is gonna be called books or my books. I think the name here needs to not have a space in it. And then if this component had subcomponents, we could declare them here in a components object. Again, maybe not something we necessarily need for this particular component, but having that empty object won't hurt anything. So now I'm gonna export default class my books extends view and here we can define a few different things. So we can define data on our app, on our component. We can define uh, computed properties, which we'll talk about in a moment. We can define props. We can set up methods and we can call lifecycle hooks. And we can set up things called watchers. So we won't be invoking all of the possible behavior of a view component here 
Um, but let's talk very briefly about each of them, just so you're aware of um, what <laughs> what's going on inside of view component um, at a very high level. So uh, we might have some data. So for instance, we might have something like my books, which is an iBook array. And we might assign that to an initial value of an empty array. So anytime we have data on a view component, it's going to be part of Vue's reactivity system. And what does that mean? That means that any time that this data changes, um, Vue is going to take care of the work of actually updating the DOM dynamically. So it's not going to require any type of page refresh. Um, Vue is going to be tracking the state of all the data that it's managing. And any time that data changes, uh, Vue will react to that change by updating the DOM as necessary. Uh, computer properties are very similar to data in many ways. Um, we, in, in this uh, type of syntax, we might have something called like book count or something like that. Typically, um, when we have a computed property here, we can let's say like return uh, this dot my books dot length or something like that. Um, a computed property, the value is going to be cached, and so view won't actually have to recalculate that value um, from scratch each time. So there's some caching involved with computed properties. And the other thing about uh, computed properties is, whereas data is going to get updated any time the uh, state of the application changes um, whatsoever. Uh, computer properties are going to get updated anytime any one of their dependencies updates. So in this case, if uh, my books gets updated, then this getter would essentially get called and the value of book count would change only in that case. It should be noted also that um, these getters, of course, don't take, they're not, they're not methods, so they're not going to take any parameters here. Um, they're just computed properties. Next we have props, which we talked about a bit earlier. This is when we need to pass data from some parent component down to uh, the particular child component where the prop is defined. Methods are just simply that. They are methods <laughs> that you can execute within the scope of uh, this component. Lifecycle hooks are special methods that Vue has that get called during the lifecycle of a component. So very common ones here are like created. Um, you'll You'll find similar. Uh, you'll find a similar concept in like React and uh, many other front-end frameworks. So these are methods that get called deterministically during uh, the various stages of component creation and destruction. So, uh, for instance, created will get called um, before the component is actually mounted. And so sometimes we can use created to, for instance, like set the initial state of a component. Watchers are kind of like uh, just a more complex version of computed properties. In a sense, they, in a nutshell, what watchers allow us to do is to actually call a function anytime um, a particular uh, piece of data changes. And we can actually use like the previous version and the new version, the updated version of data um, within the context of that function. So uh, we won't be using watchers in this particular uh, series, we will be using props methods, lifecycle hooks, and we can use computed properties here just as an example. But what we need to do is to populate this my books data from our API. And as I mentioned, this logic would often be taken care of inside of a Vuex store, but in our case, we're going to encapsulate that logic in our service class and then use the service class directly in our uh, component. So what we're going to do is up here, I'm going to say const book service is a new book service. Okay, we'll add an import statement there. And then inside of the created lifecycle hook, what I'll do is I'm going to call book service dot get all books. And we're going to say let the result equals that. And we're going to say let uh, this dot my books equal the result from, or not let, but we're going to say this dot my books equals book service dot get all books. And one thing that we should actually do quickly um, before I forget is we actually need to stop and restart the app because we added an environment variable and that's not something that we can actually hot reload. So we're going to come back.
And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call book service dot get all books, and we could await that and make a uh, create an async, or we could use this then syntax. So we could say then this dot uh, my books is equal to the result. So this is one way to do that. So now when my books gets created, we're actually going to be invoking get all books on our book service. So I'm going to refresh the page here. Um, we're not just we're not using that result yet, but let's take a look at the console. And it looks like we're getting a cores error. Um, so what's happening here is it's saying that um, localhost 5000 slash API books from origin localhost 8080 has been blocked by cores access um, policy. That is um, a pretty typical error, and it can be frustrating to try to figure out how to configure cores properly. Um, so let's go back to our startup class where we had initially configured that and see if we can figure out what's going on here.